Hey there, fifth grade. Good to be with you today. Hope you're doing well. Uh, we are in science class right now and we are in unit seven, changes to Earth's surface. And uh, our question that we are asking of ourselves right now is what are the processes that shape Earth's surface? So let's watch um, a brain pop video about erosion. What's that? Ow! <laughs> Dear Tim and Moby, what's erosion? Does it make a sound? From Minnie P. Funny you should ask, Minnie. We just had kind of a close call with the forces that cause erosion. Erosion happens when running water, wind, waves, or glaciers pick up stuff like dirt and rocks from Earth's surface and move them around. Plant roots hold sand or soil together against the effects of wind and water. When they're not there, erosion goes nuts. Nope, weathering is related to erosion, but they're not quite the same thing. Weathering occurs when rocks are broken into fragments. Erosion occurs when those fragments move. Sandblasting is a type of weathering that happens when particles of dirt and sand wear away at rock over time. Water leads to weathering and erosion too. Rivers, rain, and the ocean carry away soil and wear down surfaces. Erosion creates floodplains, sandbars, and river deltas. Over millions of years, water can make fantastically deep canyons and even change the shapes of continents. Beaches are formed by weathering and erosion too. Sand is made by the gradual process of pebbles being broken up into smaller and smaller pieces by the motion of waves. A kind of erosion that may not be as easy to spot is glacial erosion. As glaciers move, they slowly but steadily pick up loose materials from the ground. Pieces of rock caught on the glacier's surface grind mountain walls and valleys. Yep, that's erosion, all right. It usually happens much slower, but you've got the basic principle. All right, so that was our brain pop video about um, erosion. Um, you have heard that erosion and weathering are quite similar. Uh, weathering is when rocks are broken up into smaller pieces and erosion is when um, those pieces are moved. All right, so let's not get those two terms confused. All right, so um, build it to last. Uh, waterfront homes are lovely places to live, but flooding can sometimes erode the land. As shown above, a home that once stood perched above now teeters on the edge of a raging flood. As you can see, weathering and erosion influence where people can build homes, roads, and other structures. In areas that get a lot of floods or beach erosion, people often build their houses on stilts. So weathering erosion and deposition change landforms on our surface, and they can make changes to human-made structures too. What can be done about this? Well, we can choose very carefully where to build. Uh, we can also choose carefully the uh, materials that we build out of. So erosion and flooding can cause the foundation of a house and roads to collapse. Um, as water rushes under the house, leaving the foundation of the house untouched, as we saw in the previous slide, on steep hillsides, people can plant vegetation to slow rates of weathering and erosion. They can also build terraces or steps into the hillside to slow the downward movement of sediments. Uh, the steps can be made of stones or logs. Concrete walls are expensive, but they too stop sediment from sliding downhill. Um, so floods and landslides can wash away roads. Concrete retaining walls that reduce weathering can help solve the problem. Building homes on stilts is one way to reduce problems associated with flooding and beach erosion.
All right, so um, that is um, our lesson for today in science. You can find uh, today's assignment on Google Classroom. So it was good to be with you today, class, and we will see you real soon. Have a great day. Bye.